everyone and welcome to Whiskey Wednesday. Today we're talking about a very hot topic, it's Japanese whiskey, and we're looking at one of the flagships of all of it, which is Yamazaki 12. Now a little story for you, um, when I first started working in the, the retail part of the whiskey industry four years ago, I tried this when it was still 60, 70 pounds a bottle, and I really didn't get it. I didn't understand it, I didn't see what it was trying to do that was different. I uh, split this bottle with a couple of friends, and now I get it, I understand. Unfortunately, it's now a hundred and whatever pounds, you know, it's very expensive uh, for what it used to be anyway, as is all Japanese whiskey now. Um, but to tell you a bit about it, obviously it's a 12 year old single malt, aged for a minimum of 12 years of 43% ABV, for those of you that aren't aware of the product. And it's a combination of American oak, Spanish sherry oak, and Japanese Mizunara casks. So they're obviously wanting a lot of local influence and, uh, from their own products within their own range that can be bought throughout the world. There's not much to talk about. It's highly pressed. It's publicized to the nth degree. So let's talk about the smell. Let's talk about the taste and give it a score at the end. So, smell. I just find it very interesting because when I talk to customers about this whiskey, I always say that Hakshu is like the really light summery one because it smells like kiwi and lime. Uh, but this particular batch of Yamazaki 12 is probably one of the nicest things I've smelled this year. It's, it's like apricot and it's mango. It's those kind of like furry stone fruits. There's loads of that going on. That really thick honey, like soft, sweet, thick, creamy honey. Some very similar elements of like orange oil. I'm, I'm kind of... I'm wanting to find that Mizunara influence because that should be like, you know, white pepper and sandalwood and those kind of cedarwood styles, but I find it quite difficult to find the Mizunara in the mix. Which isn't a bad thing really because the smell is unbelievable as it is. There's almost like an orange juice element to it. You think like fresh orange juice on like a hot day, it kind of crisp and it's, you know, really fresh and kind of dries your mouth out a bit. I've not even tasted it yet either. It's, it's very sweet. It's much sweeter than what I remember. There's hardly any spice on the nose. I'm not getting any indication of a higher ABV than normal. Um, very delicate, very balanced. Let's try it, see if the nose matches the palate. There's the Mizunara. It's this light dryness that kind of comes across towards the finish. Really present in the finish. Now I'm getting the white pepper. I'm getting the oak, now I'm getting the dryness. The palette matches the nose almost perfectly and it's a nice kind of, if you look at it on a graph, it's like a nice upscale development. It starts off with the honey and the apricots. It's kind of slightly bittersweet fruit skins and it climbs and the honey comes along with it. There's a slight cherry note in there. There's almost like a clove, that orange oil and orange skin comes back. It reminds me so much of like fresh orange juice. It's unbelievable. Um, sweet into spicy into dry and an amazingly complex whiskey and I'm, I'm quite annoyed at myself I've left it four years to retry it given the current uh, scarcity and the higher prices of Centauri products um, I mean, it was 70 pounds when I first started working here it's now 120 so it's a lot of money for a, a 12 year old whiskey um, but I suppose that's just the way supply and demand works so many people want it Centauri can't keep up with it so you know, prices must go up, which is a very unfortunate thing in modern whiskey. We'll try it one more time, because there's a lot of layers to delve into, and then we'll score it. So to summarize, a nose of apricot, mango, honey, fresh limes, orange oil, orange skin and orange juice. That continues on the palate. All those things you smell are still present, but then it's almost like Christmassy, 
kind of dirty Sherry Cask influence comes in, very Craig Ellicky like almost, but without being too overblown. And then for me, I'm feeling the pull of that Mezzanara oak, that slight pepperiness, that dryness, very tannic nature. It's very drying on the finish. It's not, it, I wouldn't describe it as a thirst quenching whiskey in any way. I could drink that for hours and days and months and I can now see why it is so popular and so many people love it. Um, so I apologize to the whiskey community for ignoring it for four years, um, but most of you haven't because you've been buying all of it. Um, if it wasn't the price it currently is, I think it'd be like an easy nine. It's one of the most beautiful complex things I've ever tried. With the price, and we, we do take that to factor here um, on Whiskey Wednesday, I think it does lower it significantly. Not by much, it does take it to like an eight. If I was a much richer than what I am now, that would probably be my daily drink. But I'm not, so I can't. Um, so I think it does knock it down to like you know, a seven and a half or an eight. It's, it's kind of kicking in around there. I'm gonna say eight, because I think I think it's cruel to drop it below that, because the, the flavor profile is honestly beautiful. Um, but I think the price currently is very hard to justify going higher than an eight, which is unfortunate. Um, I hope the hype dies down so that it can become more affordable for everybody. Centauri probably feel the same way. Um, but there you go, that's Yamazaki 12. This is Whiskey Wednesday, that's an eight out of 10. And we will see you all next week. Thank you.